Let's talk about closing costs in Illinois. A lot of times people ask the question up front, hey, what are my closing costs going to be, uh, Jody? Well, we're in Illinois. We've got a we've got a bit of a different structure here. So the first thing we have to do is there's no real catch all like definition for what closing costs are. A lot of times when people ask about closing costs, what they're asking is how much am I going to need to bring to closing? And that's a that's more of a of an involved question in Illinois. And I'll get to that in a second. But basically what your closing costs are and how you should think about these closing costs. Think about you know, a fountain, let's say in Las Vegas, where they've got those big pools of water with those fountains that go straight up and then the water comes down after they, you know, after it comes down. And so think of your your down payment as the water level, that pool of water that is um, just there and, you know, rippling. That's your that's your base level down payment. That That's that, that's where it starts. Right. And then the fountain's got the spout and it goes straight up from there. So the things that make closing costs that make up closing costs are going to be things like the origination fee, any points you're gonna pay. Those are gonna be the only two things that are gonna come from a lender. Everything else is gonna be third party. Every single thing. And a lender can't participate on profit any place else, this company can't. It's only the one place that they're, that they're gonna have a lender fee. Everything else is third party. Everything else is estimated up front. And you get, you get invoices and things get tightened up to exact figures by the end. But we don't know every single thing up front, so we're tasked with estimating it. So again, water level, water's going up from the fountain. So you've got origination fee, you've got appraisal fee, you've got um, your attorney fee, you've got title. So title's gonna be your biggest variable expense. In Illinois, remember the seller's attorney chooses title. Okay, so so we don't know what the title company is, is gonna charge because we don't know which title company they're gonna choose. So that fee could be $2,500, it could be $4,000, it could be $5,000, depending on your purchase price. So that variable is, is, is one that you have to keep an eye on, particularly if your cash to close is gonna be lower. So keep that in mind too. Um, so there's transactional costs that are gonna make, again, that water level from the, from the fountain go up. There's transactional costs. Those costs aren't coming back. You're paying people for services rendered. Those fees aren't gonna come back. On the other hand, what's also in your closing costs is going to be your own money for your future tax, property tax, and homeowners insurance payments for the front, known as escrow. And if you if you escrow for both of those things, if you put down less than 20%, you have to escrow for both of those things into your mortgage payment, then you have to prepay into these accounts that are your accounts, they're escrow accounts, and it's your future piggy bank to take care of property tax and insurance. How much do you have to pay into those? It depends on the calendar and it depends on your closing date, right? Relative to what county you're in and when their tax bills come due. And then your homeowner's insurance payment is just made from the year of closing every year on the same day, unless you change uh, insurance carriers. So the, the key to the whole thing is you've got transaction costs, you've got your own money that's gonna go into prepaids for tax and insurance, both of those things together are, are known as closing costs, even though one of them is your future money for your own stuff, and the other side of it is your transactional costs. Don't forget your county's gonna have a recording fee. There's a bunch of other things, flood cert, tax service, uh, credit reports. There's gonna be a bunch of other things that make it go up, okay? So again, back to the analogy of, of the fountain. You've got the spout that's making the closing costs go up. Now, what makes them come down? And, and creates a, a, an estimate for cash to close, what makes them come down? In Illinois, it's the seller tax credit. So let's camp down here for a second. Let's talk about the seller tax credit. What is that and where does it come from? Well, when you buy a property in Illinois, uh, we pay our property taxes in arrears. What does that mean? It means that when you make a payment in the year that you're in, you're actually paying for the year that just, that just went by. So. Right now, as I'm making this video, it's 2021, February 2021, okay? Going back years and years to the Great Depression, the state, in its, in its wisdom and at that time, said, you know what, instead of paying your property tax this year, feed your families, don't go hungry, survive, stay alive, and pay them next year. So we fell behind in Illinois uh, many, many years ago. Well, we never caught back up, right? So when so we're always paying behind. So what does that mean? Let's say you, you have a closing April of 2021, right? 
And let's say that you're in Cook County, right? I'm in Oak Park. Oak Park is in Cook County. It's the same for every county, but different dates. So what are you saying? We've got a, an end of April closing and you're buying a property. So when the Cook County bill for the second installment comes out in 2021, that bill that comes out in late July, due August 3rd, that bill is for the last six months of 2020. But you just bought this property in April of 2021. So you don't wanna pay a tax bill that isn't your bill, that was the seller's bill. So if you wanna verbally state kind of what happens with, with your seller tax credit, you're saying, hey seller, as the buyer, you're saying, hey seller, that bill that's gonna come out later this year in 2021, that's your bill when you own the place. You please give me tax credit for every day of the last six months of 2020 and every day of 2021 leading up to the day of close and we're square. And the seller inevitably is going to say yes. And that's part of your, it's actually part of your negotiation when you buy the house, your agent is gonna um, do a, uh, a part of, of the negotiation of the purchase contract that, that guarantees that you're gonna get, you know, usually 105 or 110% of what that entire bill is going to be. So you're gonna get this, this, this big seller tax credit when you close and that is to cover all of the days of the previous year that wasn't covered yet by the seller himself or herself and then all the days of the current year to make sure that all of those days that you didn't own the home you've been essentially compensated for offset um, with this seller tax credit now it doesn't come in the form of a check it doesn't come anywhere else but onto the transaction so think of the your cash to close now in the analogy your, your cash to close has gone up, the fountain has gone up, and then what's neutralizing and bringing it back down is the seller tax credit called a tax proration. You, you are going to receive it. It's, it's on a 100% basis that you're going to receive it. Rarely, if ever, would there be a situation where you, where you would not. And that usually brings down your, your cash to close to something uh, within range of where the down payment, uh, the down payment amount is and, and sometimes, depending on the taxes, sometimes lower than what the down payment number is. So there's a process there. Think of your, your cash to close as one giant long uh, plus minus math equation, okay? Where things that are making it go up are the pluses, things that are making it go down are the minuses. So the minuses would be your seller tax proration. If you had a, an, a separate closing cost credit that was negotiated, um, if the seller is assisting you with with paying the closing costs, which is allowed um, within some rules, um, those things. And then your earnest money too. Your earnest money counts as um, something that also brings down your cash to close because you already pay for it once. We just, the lenders just need to verify the earnest money. So that's why you get a copy of the front and back of the earnest money check, don't forget. Anyway, that's the, the best and easiest way that you should explain uh, and understand kind of closing costs. Remember, Closing costs have multiple definitions, okay? On the documentation when you receive, when you go under contract and get, get your loan estimate, the closing costs are a function of two different things, the actual transaction costs, as well as your own money for prepaids for tax and insurance. And that money can be doubling what this amount is over here. So just make sure that you, you have an understanding of what you're actually asking and then if you're actually just trying to get to your cash to close estimate, like if you want to really estimate um, and you've written an earnest money check, then it's a, a really conservative sort of, you know, um, a conservative uh, estimate as to what you'd be bringing is down payment plus $5,000. If you wanted to just, without looking at a piece of paper and seeing what it is, a conservative estimate of what you'd be bringing to closing, down payment, plus $5,000, okay? But I wanted to go through the, the intricacies of it a little bit, because it's not like there's a set standard uh, amount of closing costs and you know this is what it is, or that it's all coming from the lender, okay? When people say, what are the closing costs? A lot of times they don't realize that out of the 20 something closing costs line items, only one or two of them are coming from us. The rest of them are estimated by us up front because we're required to by the government we're required to estimate other people's fees um 
and we want to figure out for you uh, also what's what your closing costs are going to be in terms of what you're going to escrow for your own tax and insurance for future tax bills, which again, isn't really a cost, but it's going to get lumped in on your documentation as an estimated closing cost. Okay. So just reach out to me if you have any questions, 630-302-2700. I appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care.